This week, it was confirmed that the double child killer, Colin Pitchfork, has been released from prison. He was jailed in 1988 for raping and murdering 15-year-olds, Linda, Linda Mann and also Dawn Ashworth in Leicestershire. Now, in June, the parole board concluded it was safe to release Pitchfork, who was the first murderer to be convicted using DNA evidence. Despite an intervention by the government, the release went ahead nonetheless. Pitchfork had pleaded guilty to both murders and was given a life sentence in January 1988. But life hasn't meant life in his case. In a case, uh, in a case as serious as this, is it time we reconsidered the death penalty? So to talk to us a little more about this um, difficult topic is barrister Chris Daw QC, an author of the new book Justice on Trial, which argues our criminal justice system is broken. Chris, welcome to the program. Uh, now, I do, I agree with you that the criminal justice system is broken. Um, what are your thoughts behind um, with the death penalty? Well, I'm completely against the death penalty. I mean, I've been involved in numerous murder cases in my almost 30 year legal career, uh, one of which involved the brutal murder of a young woman called Lynette White in South Wales on Valentine's Day, 1989. She was stabbed 69 times in, in a, an attack that was so gruesome and horrific that the pathologist said he'd never seen anything like it before. Um, three men, uh, three black men, in fact, were convicted of Lynette White's murder and sentenced to life in 1990. Um, so I don't know whether, having heard of those facts and just how horrific the murder was, your viewers will be thinking and others, well, they should have got the death penalty for doing something so horrific to a young woman. The only problem is they were all innocent. Uh, and the murder was in fact committed by a white man who wasn't discovered for another 12 years as a result of DNA evidence. So uh, if we'd had the death penalty, those three completely innocent black men would have been put to death for that brutal murder. They wouldn't be with us now. Uh, and I'm afraid to say if that's a risk that people are prepared to take, uh, well, God forbid the kind of country we'd be living in. Because I tell you what, I wouldn't want to be executed for a crime I didn't commit. And I imagine most other people wouldn't. And those three men were extremely lucky that we didn't have the death penalty and don't have the death penalty because they were eventually able to be freed on appeal. And if that doesn't explain why the death penalty is wrong, then nothing ever will. Well, people might say... Uh, that um, had DNA evidence been available, as it was in the case of Colin Pitchfork, that those uh, three black men wouldn't have been executed or, or wouldn't have been punished, I suppose, and therefore, uh, potentially, the, the victim, the, the murderer, would have been caught. So now we have DNA evidence, we have that opportunity, perhaps the death penalty will be more acceptable. Well, the assumption is that every single case involving DNA evidence is beyond doubt and beyond dispute, and that's simply wrong. There is contamination with DNA evidence. There are all sorts of reasons why cellular material can be transferred from one place to another by secondary transfer and so on. So even DNA evidence isn't infallible. And there have been numerous cases, both in the UK and in the US, where, of course, they have the death penalty, where, in fact, cases based on DNA evidence have turned out to be flawed and wrong. So if anyone's prepared to take the risk that they might be the one on the receiving end of the death penalty for a crime they didn't commit, then I understand understand why they might be willing to support it. But you have to accept that it might be your son, your daughter, your brother, who gets wrongly accused, gets wrongly convicted and gets put to death. I'm not prepared to accept that. And let's set aside the, 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 the truth here, which is that killing people is wrong. Killing people deliberately is amoral. Um, and the death penalty is a throwback to thousands of years ago when we had a sort of victim's vengeance type justice systems and the, in ancient Rome and in medieval times. Um, no civilised country on earth has the death penalty anymore. Uh, and it's completely wrong. Well, some people uh, might call that actually uh, retribution, a form of retribution, and the punishment should fit the crime. So they may be looking at the death penalty in that way. And I do understand. But what, in the, what if it's in the case of, say, a paedophile where videos are found as well? So we know for sure that it was them. Are you in favour of it in that instance where it is absolutely... I'm never in favour of... I'm, I'm never in favour of killing human beings deliberately. Well, I just think it's utterly amoral. What, what kind of a society are we if we're prepared to do the killing ourselves? What well, kind of well, well, messed actually, animals, up mindset animals, is that? Animals do that. Uh, if they're, you know, especially, you know, so we are ultimately animals. What about as a deterrent? Because life never actually means life. Um, surely that might deter people from committing the crime. 
We should introduce the death penalty because we're animals. I'm sorry, with the greatest of respect, no, animals do all sorts of things. No. Animals eat their own feces. They do all <laughs> sorts of things. Well, so do I, mean, I. I don't know what you're talking you know, about. No, seriously, no. What I'm saying is this, look. Um, if something is a danger to society and the, there is the option to have a punishment that is death because someone has murdered and you know it is absolutely them, then surely this could act as a deterrent. I'll give you an example. My son, Ivory, if I say, if you do that, that will happen. He knows that he doesn't want to do that. Not, you know, he's not going to be put to death in that way. I don't mean that. But if I say, don't do that, that could happen, then that deters him from doing it. So I'm saying... Uh, as part of uh, prison as a deterrent, right? So a death penalty could be a deterrent. They are all deterrents. So what do you threaten your son with? Hitting him with a baseball bat? I mean, <laughs> uh, come on. I mean, that you don't take extreme don't violence and fatal violence. It, I'm not being silly. You've just used an example of threatening your as son with punishment. No, as, as a some... deterrent. Well, of no, course. As... Well, why not threaten to hit him across the head with a baseball bat well, that if that's make completely sense. reasonable? No, that, that wouldn't make sense. Well, it because doesn't make sense to kill people deterrent. either. Yeah, but, but he's not going to kill somebody, is he? And I'm talking about in law, uh, whether you would put something in as a deterrent to stop people from doing that. That's what prison sentence is. It's a deterrent. It's a deterrent. So but it isn't a deterrent. The death yeah. penalty, they have it. The... They have the death penalty in many states, if not most states, of the United States. And I travelled all over the US and met people who were on capital charges awaiting trial for death row, uh, for, 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 for um, death penalty cases while I was writing my book. And, and does anyone think that America has very low levels of murder because they have the death penalty? Well, they've got uh, if, if you do think no, no, that, no, you're wrong. Got, no, 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 but they have the right to bear arms. I mean, look, we're, we're, we're comparing very different things here. I mean, these are just... No, we're not. Me Tens of thousands of murders that take place in America without a gun. There are murders committed with knives. There are murders committed with all sorts of weapons in the United States, despite the death penalty. But if it's a deterrent, what difference does it make? Well, if you've got a gun or not, you're well, not deterred be... by the fact that you might get the death penalty. Well, it, well, uh, to be honest, then, if that's the case, it could be a lot worse if there wasn't the death penalty and the numbers could be a lot higher. So perhaps it is working as a deterrent. What about in terms of things like flea bargaining, then, for uh, the person who's convicted to try and lessen their sentence? I mean, wouldn't that be something that they might be more likely to give more evidence about a crime that they could potentially be um, incarcerated for rather than the death penalty if they're prepared to give more information? Might that be part oh, of it's, it? I, you're certainly right about one thing, which is that threatening people with the death penalty and threatening people with life without parole certainly leads to people pleading guilty more. It doesn't necessarily mean they are guilty. That's the problem. If you're an innocent person and they say to you, you can have 10 years or you can have the death penalty, I'm afraid most people would just say, I'll take the 10 years. Well, well, because, and that's what happens in America. Well, let's have it in the case of somebody who you absolutely know has done it because there's video evidence as well, like many of the paedophiles um, who are out there who have been prosecuted. When you actually know it's that person, uh, then, I, I, you know, I, to be honest, I can't really see why it should be a problem. But let's uh, I'll put, throw it out to the panel and let's ask uh, Calvin and Leo what they think. Uh, Chris, stay with us. Uh, what do you think? First of all, good to speak to you again. But do you think a deterrent... Uh, well, let's talk about life imprisonment. Why does life not mean life? Would that not be more of a deterrent than bringing in extra punishments? Life does mean life. I think that's a myth that people well, don't if someone's uh, been given life in prison, understand. they get out after 30 years. That's not life, is it? It is. They're, they're a life sentence, a sentence of life imprisonment, lasts until the person dies. Uh, and if the person, when the person is released from custody after the minimum term and after they've applied for parole, they remain on life license until they die. So if they do anything wrong, if they break the terms of their parole, if they commit another crime, they are recalled under the life sentence because it doesn't ever run out. It I'm never sorry, but that's stops. That's lawyer talk. To, to, to me, the average layperson in the in the street, if I say someone's going to get life in prison, that means they're going to get life. They spend the rest of their life in prison. Well, I agree with you about one thing, which is I think there is a misunderstanding amongst the general public about what sentences mean. And that's why I think people are angry, because they don't understand that the life sentence includes two parts. It includes the part spent in custody, and it includes the balance of the person's life spent on license or on parole. And people don't necessarily understand that. And I accept that. That's not my fault. I didn't make those rules. I didn't make the law. Uh, but I can explain that every single sentence is made up of two parts, whether it's 10 year sentence or a three year sentence. It's made up of the part that's spent in prison 
and the part that's spent supervised in, uh, on license after release. And if you think about it, there's only that's only logical because you, you wouldn't want to have a 10 year sentence where the person was released with no license conditions and no control and, and no supervision at all. So it's obvious that you have to have a mixture of, of time spent in prison and time spent under supervision on license or on parole. Uh, and so the sentencing system it makes sense, but I agree it should be explained by people like me much better. And I hope that at least explains why life does mean life, albeit not spent the whole of the sentence in prison. Yeah, I, I agree with uh, Chris, uh, to be honest. I mean, looking at the, looking at the case of Colin Pitchfork, I mean, you, you get this visceral uh, desire for, um, you know, it's so disgusting, so repulsive. Uh, what, what he's done, you know, you're like, I'd, I'd kill him myself. But that's, that's the gut reaction. I think uh, thinking with a, a rational mind, there's no way governments should have the, the level of power over people to actually kill them. I don't even think the government should have the level of power to impound my car. Uh, which they did, they did last year. So, you know, for, for, for them to, for governments, we, we all know how, how bureaucratic, uh, prone to mistakes and, and prone to corruption governments are. To, so to give them the ultimate power of, uh, of, you know, being able to destroy a life. Well, and we've seen so many miscarriages of justice. I know, that, I know they're possibly getting rarer because of better uh, criminal justice procedures and because of uh, better, better technology, uh, like DNA technology. Um, but, there, you know, it's not as if we're ever going to reach a point in, uh, in life where we've got a completely utopian, flawless criminal justice system that never convicts uh, somebody incorrectly. Well, well, I mean, that's, that's, that's true. And, and, and a utopian system that is perfect is, is totally unrealistic. But the point of it is, if you know that that person has committed that crime, I don't see what the problem would be to have something that is actually the death penalty back in this country, especially for the most heinous of crimes. But then you have, the, the, the current system where life uh, doesn't mean life, or there's a, actually now we understand the interpreta interpretation of it, and thank you for that, Chris. Uh, but the point of it is, is that... People, I don't think that a lot of the criminals are even worried about being punished because in the case of Pitchfork, he's out, he's in his early 60s, and we are now going to have to spend a fortune monitoring him to make sure he doesn't reoffend. I mean, he, I wouldn't want him living near me. No. Yeah, but I don't think uh, you know, anybody could look at him and say, oh, he's, he's got off completely scot-free. I mean, he spent 33 years in he's prison. Alive. He's, gonna, he's, he's alive, though. Yeah, he's, he's alive, no, but... But his victims aren't. His victims are dead. He's alive. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, but, then. I mean, it's not as if he's, uh, he's living a life of Riley. He's, uh, I mean, I, I should imagine, I'd hope, anyway, he's burdened with, with shame and I guilt. Doubt it. His reputation's been destroyed. Uh, his, his life, he's spent most of his, most of his life in, in prison. He's changed his name. He's starting a new reputation. He's starting a new life. Mm. And his victims can't do that. I don't think that this life sentence, half in prison, half out of prison, is strong enough. No. I'm not with you fully that we should uh, bring the hanging back because I... No, no, not hanging. I mean, electric chair, lethal injection, any of those. Well, why don't but... we just bring back uh, public disemboweling and impaling no, people in spite? No, that's not the point. No, the point is that I, I just think the punishment should absolutely fit the crime. Mm. Um, but uh, Chris is, is, is suggesting otherwise. Otherwise, Chris, what, 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 um, what do you think that we should be doing then instead of the death penalty if we're not going that way? Well, I'm, I'm not suggesting that the punishment sh shouldn't fit the crime. Of course it should. Um, although I'm not a huge fan of punishment for its own sake. Um, what we should be doing is asking ourselves as a society, why are we so addicted to the sorts of punishments which were handed out thousands <laughs> of years ago, like the death penalty and like life without parole and years and years and decades and decades in prison, even for young people who have committed acts of, you know, they're not even violent in some cases, such as, you know, selling drugs and so on. What we should be doing is asking ourselves, why are we so addicted to all of these old fashioned, Old Testament ideas, which actually, when they are implemented in practice, lead to ever increasing levels of crime and violence? as they have in the United States and every other country which has long prison sentences and the death penalty has very high levels of violent and serious crime. Whereas when you look around the world, as I've done, all of those countries which look at how you stop treating children as criminals when they may uh, fall off of the, the straight and narrow as, as young, uh, young people under 18, and when you stop criminalizing drugs and punishing people for, for being addicted to drugs, and also people with serious mental health problems which take up so much of our prison system and our criminal justice system, you have to stop doing all of these things rather than just shouting for ever lengthening prison sentences which achieve the opposite effect more crime not less
I mean, it's all well and good to say we need to be more progressive and forget about things we've done in the past, but, but so. it's not fair enough to say that we're addicted to things like the death penalty because we don't have a death penalty in this mm. country. What we're addicted to is justice. We have an innate sense of justice. All human beings have it. And when we see that something is not fair, when we see that someone who has killed two teenage girls is back out on the street, starting his life again, living a good life with a new name and a new identity, that we see that as unfair and we want justice for people that have died. That's what it's about. It's not about being addicted to the past. That's a ridiculous statement. Exactly. And we are also- I totally disagree. I totally disagree that, that, that your analysis is about justice. Your, your analysis, in fact, would lead to a situation where the victim decides what happens to the criminal. So That's most people law. would say, if, some, if, if, if my daughter's been raped, that person should be locked away and throw away the key. If my son's mm-hmm. been murdered, lock, lock them away, throw away Absolutely. the key, never Absolutely. let them out. Absolutely. If we go down that route, we'll have prisons with hundreds and hundreds of thousands in them. And our society will no, be we utterly no, we destroyed. Chris. No, we wouldn't, Chris, because for the most heinous of crimes, we'd, they'd be executed and they'd no longer be with us. Thank you so much for joining us. That's Chris <laughs> Dorr, uh, QC.